Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to learn integration by parts. And we are going to want to try this if we can't integrate it in any of the other forms that we have. And it's usually going to occur when we have a product of two things, like an algebraic or a polynomial times a transcendental function. And so if you're trying like an e to the u du, if you have too much inner derivative, or if you're trying like the derivative of sine is cosine, and that's not even close here, if you have two separate things, this is when we're going to try this formula. And we're going to develop, first of all, by trying to remember the product rule. The derivative of a product is the first times the derivative of the second. So that would be u times dv dx, and then plus the second times the derivative of the first. So this is a true statement if you have the product of two things. And that would be the derivative. What we're going to do is we're going to integrate both sides. We have a true statement, so we have the right to do the same thing to both sides. We're going to integrate both sides with respect to x. And so we're going to get that the integral and derivative cancel each other. So uv must equal the integral of u dv plus v du. And our dx's canceled each other. <laughs> Since this is still a true statement, I'm going to get that the integral of u d v is equal to, I'm going to subtract the integral of v du from both sides. You know, we, when we integrate this across the sum, I actually have an integral on both of them. So this v du is still attached to this integral. So I'm going to get that that equals u v minus the integral of v du. And this is a true statement. And so this is what we can do if we ever want to integrate a product, we have a formula for it where one, the u and the dv are not even related to each other. So this is our formula for integration by parts. See above. So let's just get after some examples here. To integrate x sine x dx, I'm going to let u equal x. You want u to equal something that's easy to take the derivative of, because there's four pieces up here. We have u, we have dv, we have v, and we have du. The remaining part, I'm going to allow that to equal dv. So dv is going to equal sine x dx. Now this says up here, this formula, the integral of u dv, I've got a u times a dv, is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So I need to get a du. So I'm going to take the derivative, I'm going to ddx this u equals x statement. So that's going to be that du is equal to 1 dx. So I have something for du. And then to get back to v, I'm going to integrate both sides here. And the integral of sine is negative cosine. So I have my four parts. So let's use our formula. This integral of u times dv must work out to be u times v. So that's this times this. So that's x times negative cosine x. I'll just go ahead and put the negative in front of the x. Plus, sorry, it's minus, but watch what happens. It's actually minus the integral of v du. And the integral of this negative cosine x dx, that's why I called this a plus. This negative on this cosine x, I'm going to go ahead and pull out in front of this integral. That's why I turned this to a plus and make this the integral of cosine x dx. And then you're going to see if you can answer this second integral, and we can. We know the integral for cosine x, so my answer is negative x cosine x plus sine x plus c. Let's do this again. <coughs> Sometimes you've got to repeat the process. Uh, let's, I'll show you what this looks like. Let's let our u equal x squared. It's typically u is something you, you want to have an easy derivative and you want dv to have an easy integral. And it's easy to integrate trig and it's easy to integrate e to the x. So there's our u and my dv. So I'm going to have to find my du which is 2x dx and my v is the integral of this and that's just e to the x. So my formula is the integral of u dv is equal to uv. So that's going to be x squared e to the x right here and then minus the integral of v du. So that's 2x e to the x dx. All right, so I just had to pause and resume there real quick. Now what we have to do, we have to repeat this process because I am still left with a product. So I can't integrate this yet. I still have the integral of like a u times a dv. So I'm going to um, do this again. 
I'm going to try and answer this integral. So, so far I have x squared e to the x, and now minus, now I'm going to use integration by parts on this side. So I'll let my u equal 2x, and I'll let my dv equal e to the x. You want your u to be something that's easy to take the derivative of, and you want your dv to equal something that's very easy to integrate. So I'm going to have this second iteration is going to be uv, so that's 2x e to the x, minus the integral of v du. And hopefully I can do this. And the 2 is going to come out in front of this. So do we know the answer for the integral of e to the x? We do. So my final answer is x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x. And these two negatives are going to make a plus 2 e to the x plus c. Now, I want to show you that there is a nice little table way of approaching this if you have powers of x and you don't want to repeat this. So I've got this exact same question, but I'm going to show you how to turn this into a table. You want to make a little column with a u and a v, and you're going to let your u equal the power of x, and you're going to start taking derivatives until you get down to zero. The derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of 2 is 0. You're then going to write this, by the way, this is a dv. You're then going to have e to the x be your dv, and you're going to integrate this the same number of times. So e to the x is very easy to integrate. It doesn't change at all. Now, my answer to this, if you do it like this little chart, you're going to take the top left, and you're going to go multiply down in diagonals, and you're going to alternate signs. So it's going to equal x squared e to the x and then minus 2x e to the x and then plus 2 e to the x and then I'm out of things to multiply by and that's the same answer that we got earlier. It's a lot easier to use. I really like this chart when you have powers of x. Now let's go take a look at what happens if we've got limits on our integration. And so what you want to do is you want to ignore the limits for now, integrate without them, and then plug them in. Now we already know, because this, this was the first example, that the integral of x sine x is, works out to be negative co x cosine x plus sine x. And then we're going to evaluate this from 0 to pi over 2. So we know we're going to plug the pi over 2 in first for x. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. So there's my first term. My second term is now we're going to plug in a 0, and that's going to be 0 plus the sine of 0 is 0. And so I get my answer is equal to 1. All right, last example is what if we don't have x to some power, and we just have two transcendental functions that have nothing to do with the other person's derivative or the other thing's derivative. If you have this, I want you to always, always let the trig function be your dv. Always let your trig function be your dv. I, I would never let your trig function be u. So u is equal to e to the x. And let's go through the formula. So du is going to equal e to the x dx. And then v is the integral of cosine, which is sine x. So my answer for this integral is going to be uv. So I've got e to the x sine x minus the integral of v du. So that's e to the x sine x dx. And this looks just like the one before where we just have to lather, rinse, and repeat this process. So let's try and answer this second integral. Again, we'll let dv equal the trig function. And then we'll let u equal our exponential. We take the derivative, so du is equal to e to the x dx. And then v is negative cosine x. So my answer to this integral got e to the x sine x in front minus, I'm going to put parentheses here, it's uv, so it's negative e to the x cosine x minus the integral of v du, and I'm going to pull that negative out in front, make that a positive, and I've got e to the x cosine x. And now I think I might be in trouble because I am, this is like a little cycle, I'm right back to an integral that I was trying to answer before. And it might seem like this is going to go in a deadly cycle and we're never going to be able to answer it, but I want you to watch this little algebra trick. We know that this all equals the integral 
of e to the x cosine x. That's what we've been trying to find. We did work on that, and this is what we got. I'm going to scooch down here and write that statement a little better. So we, we've gotten so far that the integral of e to the x cosine x works out to be e to the x sine x plus, I'm distributing this negative here, plus e to the x cosine x, and then minus the integral of e to the x cosine x. And instead of trying to continue to iterate this, let's do some algebra. Let's add this integral to both sides. So I'm going to add the integral of e to the x cosine x to both sides. So let's see what we got. Well, I have two of these, two of what I'm looking for works out to be e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x. So we are trying to solve for the integral of e to the x cosine x, so all we have to do to get our answer is divide by 2. And so we don't lose a minus 1 point, we'll put a plus c on the end. So there you go, you'll practice integration by parts tomorrow, and I'll see you then.